Running reports. Finally, you've done it. You've taken the time to enter all your tasks, create dependencies, enter your resources, and assign your resources to tasks. Now you get your reward for all that work. Now you get to run reports. Reports make it easier to communicate about your project. They make it easier to show the boss exactly how great you are doing. What's more, they show how costs are accumulating, what tasks are in progress, and which ones still need to start. They show progress and give you a picture of each element of the project and the project as a whole. Standard reports are pre-designed reports that Project offers you. They offer a lot of choices regarding the information you can add, so at the same time that we say they're pre-designed, they're also customizable. You can also choose the format for standard reports, such as table, chart, or comparison report. Some let you choose the orientation, landscape, or portrait. In addition, you can also customize standard reports by changing their name, the periods they cover, the table of information, and the filters. You can also add themes, formatting, images, and shapes to standard reports. To run a standard report, go to the Report tab. There are four standard report categories, Dashboard, Resources, Costs, and In Progress. Each category contains several reports. To run a report, first click on a report category. Next, select a report. We are choosing Resource Overview just to show you how easy it is to run a standard report. When we click on Resource Overview, the report is generated for us in the Project 2016 window. Dashboard reports are new to Project 2016. There are five dashboard reports. Burndown, Cost Overview, Project Overview, Upcoming Tasks, and Work Overview. To run a dashboard report, click on the Dashboard drop-down arrow under the Report tab, then select the report that you want. We're going to click on Burn Down. This report is used to compare baseline work remaining to amount of work remaining and the number of tasks remaining compared with baseline tasks remaining. This helps you see whether you are working at the pace you planned or if you're in danger of falling behind. If you can't find the standard report that covers what you need, you can also create a new report. To do this, go to the Report tab and then click on the New Report drop-down arrow. You'll then see this drop-down menu. Choose if you want a blank, chart, table or comparison report. We're going to choose Chart. Enter a name for the report and then click OK. You'll now see this split window. The Report field is in the middle here. On the right is the Field List pane where you can choose the fields for your report. Go to the Select Category section in the Field List pane. Here you can choose Time, ID, Name, Resource Names and Unique ID. Next, go to the Select Fields category and choose the fields you want in your report by checking the boxes. You can also apply a filter if you want down the bottom here. Select Grouping from the Group by drop-down menu if you want to group information. Select a level to view the information. Level 1 is the entire project. Finally, choose how you want the data sorted. This is the order you want the data presented based on the fields that you choose. You can click Enter to view the report. The report is saved under Custom under the Report tab. As we told you, you can also customise standard reports. There are three categories that you can edit or modify in a standard report. These categories are the definition, which includes the name of the report, the time period for the report, the table of information, any filters that you've applied, and whether or not you want your summary tasks to appear. The details. You can also include details for tasks such as task notes and predecessors. Details for resource assignments, notes and cost can be included. What's more, you can show tools, add a border or place grid lines between the details of the report. And sort. Project allows you to sort by three criteria in ascending or descending order. Once you create a report in Project 2016, a new tab will appear on the ribbon. This is the Report Tools Design ribbon as you can see here. Using the tools in this tab, you can customise your standard report by adding a theme, changing the font, 
adding effects and so on. First, let's open up a standard report. You can also add images, shapes and text boxes. What's more, you can add page breaks, adjust the margins and set orientation or paper size. These are all tools common to all Microsoft products. We can be almost 99.9% .9 sure that if you're using Project 2016, you have also used other Office products and are familiar with these tools. That said, instead of covering how to use these tools, we are going to cover three important guidelines for customising and formatting your reports. The first point is unlike with a Word document, you can't add graphics wherever you want. They can only be added to the chart pane of a Gantt chart view, a task note, a resource note, or a header, footer or legend in reports. The second point is that data in a chart can be formatted by double clicking on a chart section. When you do this, a chart tools design tab will appear on the ribbon, as well as a format tab will appear. The third point is that you can move or resize any item in a report by clicking on it and then moving it or resizing it. Visual reports are a lot like pivot tables in Excel. They allow you to view data from different perspectives beyond the standard report capabilities. These perspectives are very useful for data analysis. Project offers you six categories of visual reports. Some of these are based on time phase data or data distributed over time, and some are not. These categories are task usage, which is based on time phase data for tasks and shows you cash flow and earn value over time. The resource usage is based on time phased resource data and shows you resource availability, costs and work data. Assignment usage is also based on time phased data that shows baseline versus actual costs and baseline versus actual work. And task summary, resource summary and assignment summary. These provide diagram views of work and cost data. They are not time phased. Creating a visual report is easy. To create and generate a visual report, go to the Report tab and then click on the Visual Reports button here. The Visual Reports dialog box now appears, as you can see here. Select if you want the report template created in Excel or in Visio. Then select the report that you want to view. Then click on the View button at the bottom here. Your report will then be generated in either Visio or Excel, depending on which one that you choose. The first thing you always need to do before you print anything in project is to view the page setup so you know that all the information you need will be printed on the page. To modify the page setup for a report, go to the File tab to access the Backstage view. Click Print on the left. Next, click on the Page Setup link, which is down the bottom here on the left. You'll then see the Page Setup dialog box. As you can see, there are six tabs in this dialog box. The page tab will help you set the paper size, orientation and scaling. If you need to adjust your margins, click on the margins tab. If you need more room for your report to display, you can always reduce margins. You can increase margins if you have a brief report, but do not want to hand out a report that fills only a small part of the page. If you've used headers and footers in your report, you'll find the headers and footers tabs helpful. The legend tab will help you create a legend to explain the various graphic elements. The legend is automatically created for you. All you have to do is specify the text that goes with the legend. And the view tab allows you to select if you want to print all columns, how many columns per page, print notes, and print blank pages. You can also choose to print column totals. This page pertains to the usage views. When you have your page set up, click OK. To print, Click the print button at the top left of the window here. We'll talk about printing more in depth in the next lesson.